Hi students. Today we are going to discuss about the poem and Jennifer's tigers. So this poem is considered as a important poem from your board's perception. Why? Because uh, it is repeatedly asked in lot of your uh, CBSE question papers, and uh, it is very easy also. Why? Because there is only three stanzas, and each stanza has only four lines. It is very easy for any student to understand. The two factors which you should keep in mind is uh, the central. theme of this poem that is escapism escapism means every human being has one kind of a behavior where if there is a problem the real life situation is getting worse so they have some kind of a remedy not to solve the problem but to change their mind i have a habit of reading books you have a, you will have a habit of watching tv some will have a habit of going out with their friends so it depends upon one person to other person so here and jennifer has a habit of doing her embroidery work which she believes that it is going to uh, change her mind so she is trying to bring out her frustration she is trying to pictureize her um, what she is lagging everything in the form of a embroidery so here and jennifer tiger is written by the poet adrian rich so she is from usa and uh, adrian rich is uh, belong uh, she belongs to an era where radical feminism was um, was uh, was prevailing so here our feminism to be very particular or to be very simple feminism is an uh, kind of a movement which supports female or it supports women's rights maybe so here but uh, radical feminism is one kind of a feminism where you can call them as an extremist because those ideas and ideologies which they have even women can't accept so those kind of uh, extreme level of feminism is radical feminism so here in this poem the poem and jennifer tiger addresses the constraints of marital married life of a woman uh, of a woman of a woman and her experience that is the poem and jennifer tiger addresses the constraints of married life a woman experiences so what kind of experiences a woman experiences Uh, or what kind of a pressure she is undergoing after her marriage is the prime factor which the poet is trying to bring out in this poem so here and jennifer the first stanza and jennifer tigers the first stanza here describes about the embroidery which is been done by the aunt second paragraph describes about the aunt what kind of a behavior she is having what is her uh, actual situation has been explained in the second paragraph third paragraph is when the aunt is dead what will happen what will happen to the tiger what will happen to her so those are the three things which has been discussed in the poem so now we'll move on to the first paragraph and jennifer's tigers prance across a screen bright topaz denizens of a world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty so here the first line and jennifer's tigers is the tiger which has been embroidered in the piece of cloth it is prancing across the screen means it is moving from one place to another it's not literally moving from one place to another it is like it is having a image of movement it is like it is going to jump from one place to another so that kind of a image it is the second line describes the color of the embroidery it is bright topaz topaz means it is a color of it is bright yellow color it is a color of a one kind of a uh, stone precious uh, stone uh, it is bright yellow in color so this color is the tiger which has been embroidered so it is called the denizens of the world of green denizens is a word which literally means that you are a citizen you belong to one particular place but here the poem means that it is a bright topaz denizens of a world of green so here denizens means you are superior you are above everyone you are uh, having a prime uh, space in a particular area so those kind of a meaning is that you belong to one particular area where you are very important so that kind of a meaning is given through this word 
of the world of green so this tiger is belonging to the world of green means forest so and jennifer's tigers prance across the screen bright topaz denizens of a world of green they do not fear they don't have any fear for the men beneath the tree it is not having any kind of fear for the human beings they pace in sleek chivalric certainty it is having a very elegant movement so movement of one person can identify their we can easily identify their emotion when you move in a manner we can say that you are in a hurry you can say that you are very cool so you can easily identify with your movement that you are uh, having uh, what kind of emotion in your head the same way this tiger is moving in a sleek chivalric certainty means sleek means in a very elegant manner and chivalric certainty is because without any fear without any kind of a frustration it is moving in a very elegant manner cool manner so that is what she is trying to say so now let us revise and jennifer's tigers prance across the screen it moves it is in a way it is in a it is embroidered in a manner where it is showing some kind of a movement it is bright yellow in color it is like it is the denizen of the world of green it is the king or it is a superior factor in the world of green is the forest and they do not fear for the men of the beneath the tree it is having no uh, any it is not having any kind of fear for the human beings and it is moving in a very elegant manner and jennifer tiger prance across the screen bright topaz denizens of world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty i hope you understand so the second uh, paragraph is about the aunt aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool and jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull even the ivory needle hard to pull the massive weight of the uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon and jennifer's hand so here and jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool means she is doing the embroidery work and when she is doing that her fingers are shaking she is having a uh, she is not having a very stable hand she is her fingers are shaking and she is finding it very hard for even the ivory needle for her to pull it out of the cloth one it is very hard for her to even uh, pull out the ivory needle that much weak she is and in her hand she is having a wedding ring you know um, wedding ring symbolizes the marriage so here the massive weight of the wedding ring means it is not literally that the wing ring is very heavy it means the pressure and the pain put on that particular lady after the marriage is sitting on her as a massive weight so it is just given as a symbolism symbolization sits heavily upon and jennifer's hand they are saying because of the pain of her marriage because of the pressure of the marriage she is finding it very hard even to pull out a ivory needle out of her uh, out of the piece of cloth that's why her fingers are fluttering her fingers are shaking this denotes that she is having fear and jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool fluttering means shaking find even the ivory needle hard to pull because she is very weak the massive weight of uncle's wedding band why she is mentioning it as uncle's wedding band because it is the wedding band which the uncle that is aunt uncle is give, has given her during her at the time of her marriage sits heavily upon and jennifer's hand because it is very heavy it's not literally meaning that the ring is heavy because of the pain and pressure which she is undergoing during her after her marriage so that is the second stanza when aunt is dead so after third stanza is and when aunt is dead her fing terrified hands will lie her terrified hands is will lie so here we can easily find out that the aunt is having kind of, some kind of a fear why because one thing you can understand that because her fingers are fluttering you can say that she is having some kind of a fear for the uncle one thing one reason is that maybe uh, she is afraid that her husband will come and see her doing embroidery 
one thing and the second thing is because she is very weak her she is not able to have that kind that much strength in her body for doing that particular work so she is anyway she is having that kind of a fear in her heart so when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie so her terrified hands means the hands which is which was terrified her heart which was terrified is will lie still ringed with the ordeals ordeals means pains pain so her hands even if she after the death of the aunt her hands will still have that fear or the terrified nature within her she mastered by she was mastered by why do you mention someone as a master why you do you say that one person you can explain you can expect them to be called as a master because they have mastered some kind of an art then we can be we can call them as a master so she has mastered the ordeals means after her marriage she has mastered the pain which is which is familiar for her every day because this lady is facing the pain and pressure each and every day at part one particular time she has mastered that art she has become a master of experiencing and uh, undergoing pain and pressure in her day to day life so even after her death her terrified hands will still be ringed with the pain and uh, pain or ordeals which she has mastered for this uh, this uh, this long period of her marriage life the tiger in the panel that she made so what now they are saying what will happen to the tiger after she died the tiger in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid so here they are saying even after the death of the ti- uh, the death of the aunt the tiger will move on, go on prancing without any uh f- fear without any um, any kind of uh, uh, frustration or pressure the tiger will be uh, moving with proud and it will not it will be unafraid so here you you can easily find out the comparison between the aunt and the tiger the tiger is moving aunt is stuck with her married life second point first the tiger is moving aunt is stuck in her life she is not able to move from her life the tiger is bright topaz and it is the king of its own world but aunt is not second thing it is not having any kind of a fear but the aunt is having even uh, she is finding it ha- fingers are fluttering because she is finding even the uh, ivory needle hard for her to pull second third uh, fourth one is that its movement is very she will rick it is very elegant but she is very weak and uh, she is uh, she is having the fear for her husband also so here there is a sharp contrast between aunt and the tiger which she is making so here the aunt is trying to make something which she is not that is she is having fear what she is creating is not having so she is trying to create something she is trying to show something where her what and all she is lagging is not been pictureized in that particular embroidery so this is the meaning of the poem i hope you people understand children aunt jennifer tigers prance across the screen so we'll just revise it aunt jennifer tiger prance across the screen bright topaz denizens of the world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty and jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory na- needle hard to pull the massive weight of aunt uh, sorry the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand when aunt is dead her terrified fingers will lie it will still have that fear still ringed with ordeals she was mastered by because she has mastered the capacity to overcome the fear or to experience that kind of a pain in her day to day life the tigers in the panel that ha- that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid so here there is a meaning for the word a person or an animal or a plant that lives grows and often to a found in a particular place that is a that is that's what i said it is the citizen of that particular place sleek means elegant so these are the two meanings which they have given now uh, i hope you understand the meaning of this poem now we'll just uh, quickly finish off the um 
uh, two more things that is the rhyming scheme which is followed in this poem sometimes they can ask this question so the rhyming scheme which is followed in this poem is a a b b comma c c d d comma e e f f that is i repeat a a b b means the rhyming scheme here is green green a a b b is tree certainty t e e so a a b b so here c c d d is wool pull and then um, i'm sorry wool and pull that is c c and band hand is the fourth sound so this is d d the same way lai bai is the e e and f made afraid so these are the rhyming scheme so this poem has a rhyming scheme and the scheme is a a b b comma c c d d comma e e f f so these are the rhyming schemes and now uh, for the last section we'll finish off uh, with uh, the rhyme, with the um, poetic device which is uh, there in the poem because it is very important for you to understand the poem and the poetic device which is in uh, which has been uh, uh, incorporated in the poem so the first thing is bright topaz denizens of the world of green so now bright topaz when i say bright topaz i said it is yellow in color so now you have something shiny yellow in color in your mind so now if i can is i can, yeah, i know that you can you uh, you already guessed it that is the poetic device used uh, here is an imagery so you have an image in your mind so that is visual imagery so here uh, the poetic device used in this line is visual imagery so the next poetic device is here um here see this sentence starts with um they and the second sentence that is the next sentence also has the they and they so what is the poetic device used here they and they if it is repeated to the next sentence itself it is called as anaphora so these two sentences have a poetic device called anaphora uh, a n a p h o r a anaphora okay so the third poetic device is here uh, sorry mm, they pace in sleek chivalric certainty so here can you tell me what is the poetic device here c c c so it is alliteration repetition of this first letter which has been ripped up alliteration means repetition of the first letter in two consecutive words so c c so this is a alliteration you understand so we'll move on to the second paragraph and jennifer tiger fingers fluttering again it is f f it is alliteration next the massive weight of uncle's betting band so here um the massive weight of uncle's betting band it is a hyperbole so here massive weight of uncle's wedding band like i said it is not literally mean doesn't mean that the weight of the ring is so heavy so she can't move her hand that is not the meaning they are giving a um uh, hyper uh, imaginary meaning for that small thing that is you are doing you are giving a small issue into a you are making a small issue into a very big issue that kind of a exaggeration if there is something exaggerate exaggerated like that then it is called as a hyperbole so here the massive weight of an uncle's wedding band is an exaggeration which is done in this uh, star line so it is called as a hyperbole you can you can also say there is a alliteration in this sentence that is the w and w here so it is also called as an alliteration but most probably if the sentence is given this sentence is given i expect you to write uh, the poetic device as hyperbole only okay so then um, the next poetic device i think it is yeah uh, still ringed with ordeals still ringed with ordeals is a metaphor so ringed with ordeals means um, it is just a, a imagery which is not been compared you know the difference between a simile and a metaphor simile like an as if it is used it is a simile when it is not used but the same comparison is done then it is called as a metaphor then um, yeah here prancing proud pp it is an alliteration okay mm then anything at the time is yeah here uh, terrified hands when aunt is dead her terrified hands here terrified hands is a 
transferred epithet. I hope you remember the meaning of the uh, poetic device transferred epithet. That is um, when a transferred epithet is when a meaning of some kind of a different word is me it has been transferred to a, me, uh, a word which has a very less meaning. That is terrified hands means terrified is a uh, it is also it is also this terrified hands is also a personification because uh, hands will not terrify humans mind and body will have that kind of a terrified feeling so a mind or a human heart which is having an emotion of terrified terrified emotion is being transferred to something ha called as very less meaning that is a hand so here human mind or human emotion is transferred to a one part of a body that is why it's transferred ep epithet and the same way hands will not get terrified only a human emotion it is a human emotion so human emotion when it is transferred to a small thing which is not having any kind of a movement of its own that is a hand then that's why it's called as a personification also so here when aunt is dead her, her transferred uh, sorry uh, terrified hands will lie is a transferred epithet plus a personification so I, I hope you understand and um, um, and if you have any doubts we'll discuss in class okay thank you